When you get a Give Energy battery system, you get obsessed with energy usage and graphs and data and watching what it's doing to the point of annoying your entire family with who used that amount of energy yesterday afternoon? What's going on? But sometimes you'll see a graph and you think, well, hang on a minute, is this right? For example, this one here. This shows that red spike at the bottom that I've used a little bit of the grid. I got some electricity from, well, out there, the grid itself. Why? My battery is being told to power the house. Why am I taking energy from the grid and the battery isn't doing it all? Is there something wrong? Have I configured it incorrectly? Is this right effectively? Well, the answer is yes. It's completely normal. It's expected. In fact, with any battery system I could install in this house right now, it would have the same sort of blips or spikes. It's a battery thing rather than anything unique to give energy. Now, I used to be a customer of Give Energy for several years before I joined them. So if I just go back to that mindset for a second, I think that part of the reason for this video existing is because Give Energy are almost too honest. I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. So why is my battery not powering my house all the time? Why have I got these little energy spikes or blips that the grid's having to fill in? What is going on? Well, for that, I'm going to have to get my bad analogy hat out. Along with my hat, I have these two cars for the analogy that are definitely my daughter's and not mine. Now imagine the green car is following the white car. This is doing 30 miles per hour. This is doing 30 miles per hour. It's matching its speed exactly. But what happens if the white car goes from 30 to 60 miles per hour? The green car has to first observe the white car speeding up to then put its foot down and catch up and then they'll be back in sync. And it works in reverse as well. If the car drops from 60 to 30 mile an hour, the green car has to observe that white car slowing down before it can then do the same and once more they're back in sync. So I can take the analogy hat off now and essentially explain what's going on in terms of your house usage. So let's say you've got 500 watts of current usage going on in your house right now and someone turns something big on and it goes up to 4,000 watts. So what's going to happen is that your battery will see the demand going from 500 to 4,000 watts and then ramp up, so to speak, to match the demand. But there's going to be an ever so slight, a tiny delay, a lag, if you will, from the battery noticing the demand increasing to it actually matching that demand. That little blip that you see on the graphs is the grid filling in that little tiny bit of space in between the house demanding, in this case, 4,000 watts and the battery providing it. And like the car, it does work in reverse. If you're using 4,000 watts and all of a sudden you turn something off, the battery is outputting 4,000 and then it goes, oh, hang on a minute, you don't need that anymore. It winds back down again. And in the meantime, that small, tiny bit of lag, well, the energy has to go somewhere. So you'll see a little bit of a, an export blip, if you will, a tiny little bit of export. So again, this is very normal for any system. And if I put the graph back up again, the one with the red spike, that at its peak said it used 1.6 kilowatts, but it was just for a very short amount of time, a tiny, tiny amount of time that just blipped in and blipped out again. If I look at my energy usage, it used roughly in that brief period, that brief blip, about 0.1 kilowatt hours. We're talking at the daytime peak rate that I'm on about two and a half, 2.8 pence. So this is something that will happen throughout the day when mainly you turn something large on or something that uses a lot of energy suddenly kicks in or turns off again because your house is constantly fluctuating in terms of its energy demand. Everything that uses electricity, like your, your TV, a computer, uh, depending on what you're doing with it, its amount of electricity consumption just fluctuates constantly put dozens of that type of device in a house and your house demand is fluctuating accordingly. The Give Energy battery system is actually really quick at responding. In fact, this is another reason why it's worth doing firmware updates. Every now and then a firmware update will increase the response time, which reduces the amount of grid input that you need. It might be a fraction of a second, but every little helps. 
It's actually quite fascinating to watch when you're in the labs at Give Energy. Every half a second or so, it's checking the consumption of your house. What are you using now? What are you using right now? What are you using right now? And again, it's always fluctuating. So again, this is normal. It's nothing to worry about. It will use over a period of 24 hours, a tiny amount of electricity, probably, I don't know, less than half a kilowatt hour and it is completely normal for a battery system, not just a give energy battery system. So what did I mean exactly by give energy earlier on, being too honest? It's about the data. So they show you the data, the little blips, all the things I've just mentioned, it shows it on the graph. If I put my energy geek hat back on for a second, it ruins my graph. I've got a nice, not using the grid at all graph, and then I have this little red spike, it's ruining it. What others sometimes do is effectively smooth out those, those spikes, smooth out the graphs. So it's not immediately obvious as to what's going on. So what do you think we should do? Should we smooth out these little blips, these little spikes to make the graph look better? And ultimately not hide data, that's not what's happening with anyone else either, but just make it look a bit neater. Or should it just be, this is your data, this is what's happened, and at that millisecond, it was just getting a little bit of grid input. It's just bad luck almost. Now, hopefully, that explains what's going on. It's nothing to worry about. It's, well, it's not just common. It's across the board in terms of battery systems. And ultimately, it's costing a very small amount of money in terms of peak usage. The only way you could stop grid usage is effectively by unplugging yourself from the grid, so you become off grid. When a battery is powering the house, you're not off grid, you're grid neutral, because at some point it will require, even if we're talking a few watts, that little bit of filling in. Again, thank you for watching. Please do subscribe to the Give Energy channel because then you will get little nuggets like this, you will get little tips, tricks, and explanations as to what's going on. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. I'm gonna go wear my hat now and play with my cat.